Today we're talking about Jade Emperor's Crown. Not too long ago I made a comparison for various support items regarding their defensive stats, but this is one of the items that I kinda left out that I should have probably paid more attention to. It was really just not on my radar, because I consider it more of a, whatever, strange outside choice. But the more I looked into this item and the more Emil Z especially brought it to my attention, the more I realized just how much potential this item may have. And in order to better understand how this item works, I wanted to look into the numbers. This video, compared to others, will have quite a few numbers, but keep in mind that it's not that important to keep track of all of those. You obviously can if you want to, they will be available, but most of the information will be understandable without deeply looking into the numbers as well when I explain them. Now, the item I will be comparing Janet Emperor's Crown to in any regard is Sovereignty in its nerfed state. That is because Sovereignty is the only other aura item that focuses purely on physical defense or some sort of protection against physical damage from enemies and Jade Emperor's Crown fits right in there. Also, as I've shown in my last video, Sovereignty is still the best item when it comes to raw, effective health in the physical department, though Jade Emperor's Crown may have some perks here that kinda stand out in other ways and we'll talk about exactly that. Another item that could obviously be thrown into the competition here would always be Height of the Urchin, just for the full defensive stats on that, but once again, we're looking at aura items here that support your team more, and as such, Jade Emperor's Crown simply makes a lot more sense versus Sovereignty. A quick reminder regarding the stats for those of you who have not been keeping track of the changes. Sovereignty, 2100 gold, 200 health, 40 physical protection, and the aura is that allies around you get 15 physical protection and also 25 HP 5. What's already notable here and what we can say at this point is that the tier 1 Iron Male has 75 health and 10 physical protection and Steel Male, the tier 2, has 200 health and 20 physical protection. Now if you look over to Jade Emperor's Crown, the tier 1 and tier 2 in my opinion are not quite as nice. While they do have 10 more physical protection each, 20 and 30 respectively, they come with magical power on top of that and not health. So Imperial Helmet has 10 magical power and Jade Mountain Helm has 20 magical power. If you're looking for a support build, power is usually not that relevant. If anything, most Guardians benefit a lot more from having some level of penetration of going through the enemy's protections as opposed to having raw power because the scalings are usually not that good. The protection here is higher than on the Sovereignty counterparts but the health on the Sovereignty counterparts should be more relevant in most scenarios especially because you're also facing magical opponents. The tier 3 however, Jade Emperor's Crown, does have health. The item has 20 magical power, 60 physical protection, 100 health and an aura that reduces all enemy guards physical power by 30 within 55 units. What we can say right away is that Jade Emperor's Crown has a little bit more physical protection, 5 more, but it also has 100 health less. It does not have HP 5, but it has some magical power in return, and it obviously has its passive on top of that. Meanwhile, Sovereignty has lower protections for yourself, 55, but it gives some extra protections to your teammates, 15, and it also gives the HP 5 to your teammates, which is something worth noting. The 25 HP 5 can be decently impactful as well. And with that, we can look into the numbers. I compared the stats here on an Artemis and a Kumbakana, both level 10 with the following builds. For Artemis, it was Death Tall and Power Boots only. For Kumbakana, it was Watcher's Gift, Boots, doesn't matter here, it was Travel Shoes, and then either of the items, Jade Emperor's Crown or Sovereignty. I chose this Hunter build because it's not at this stage yet where we have to factor in other wonky effects, such as Ikaivil, Executioner, or Concise, and we also already have some power to work with, which means that power reduction actually does something. At the same time, I also used a Huyi later on to compare some other things, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Some stats worth noting beforehand. Artemis on level 10 with these items has 50 power, which means she has 110 in-hand damage, which we will have to factor in for later calculations. And Kumbakana has 55 defense and 1590 health base, basically, or with watches, 
Then if you're including sovereignty, it goes up to 1790 health and 110 physical protection, 44 magical protection. Whereas with Jade Emperor's crown, you get 1690 health, 115 physical protection and 44 magical protection. Obviously with sovereignty you also get the HP 5, so you have 41 HP 5 instead of the normal 16. Let's look at the base stats here first. In terms of effective physical health, Sovereignty is still the clear winner, which should not be also surprising. It still has more health with almost the same protections and the more time you spend in a fight through the HP 5, the better it is for Sovereignty as well. So the difference kind of starts around a little more than 100 effective health and then after 10 seconds it's already more than 200 effective health difference due to the HP 5. In the magical department it's kind of similar if you keep in mind that HP 5 will also extend the lead for sovereignty over time due to the extra health and the sustain throughout the team fight. It's also worth noting at this point that both items are almost the same price so that doesn't really matter in this context. But what these numbers don't show us yet and what we'll look into right now is the passive of Jade Emperor's Crown because that doesn't really factor in with the effective health in the same way but rather in how much damage the enemy deals to you and it makes a big difference here. If you look at Sovereignty and Emperor's Crown when it comes to basic attacks from Artemis it makes a huge difference which of the two you have. If you look at the damage values here you will see that a basic attack while having Sovereignty on you will deal 52 damage. However, Emperor's Crown affects your power which has 100% scaling on basic attacks. So therefore, with Jade Emperor's Crown, the damage is only 37 per shot. In regards to how much of a difference that makes an actual fight, we have to look at how many shots it would take you to kill a support with that build from full health. Obviously a lot, because those are geared to tank up a lot of shots and you would never have a scenario where you just basic a support down that early in the game. But just to apply the logic here, it would take you 34 shots to kill the support with basic attacks when he has sovereignty would take you 45 shots to do the same thing with the Jade Emperor's Crown. With the abilities however it looks a little bit different. Because your abilities scale lower than your basic attacks most of the time unless you're talking about ultimates or high scaling abilities in general and for example Artemis 3 only scales with 40% the difference here is much much smaller. In fact, you will see that while Sovereignty has 154 damage from the 3 and Emperor's Crown has 145 damage, the time to kill or the shots to kill, the abilities to kill, end up being exactly the same, 11.6 in both cases. So here it wouldn't actually matter uh, which of the two items you have because in the end the scalings on that ability are not strong enough for Data Emperor's Crown to have a massive effect. The higher the scaling of the abilities is, the more of an impact Jade Emperor's Crown will have though. If you have a very high scaling ability then obviously losing more power means more as opposed to an ability where the scaling doesn't really matter and most of the damage is coming from the base value of the ability. But let's not forget that you're still a support. You're buying these items not only to survive but also to support your team and assist them. So let's compare the damage values for an ally that has no protections of any sort and is just affected by the aura or has an enemy that is affected by the aura. For that we have a level 10 Ho Yi with no health items so just a blue stone power build basically and he will have no protections either aside of what we give him. In that case, Sovereignty will give him enough protections for the enemy Artemis to deal 70 damage per shot, whereas with Jade Emperor's Crown, the enemy Artemis will do 56 damage per shot. Already a significant difference here, because if we translate that to the shots that it requires you to kill the target, which in this case will have both the same health in either scenario, it's 17 or 18 shots rather with Sovereignty, whereas it is 22 shots with Jade Emperor's Crown. Four basic attacks in a trade can make a huge difference and I think that's something worth noting. If we're looking at abilities though, it is a little different here. Once again, abilities sometimes just scale relatively low and power doesn't make much of a difference and then the protection can actually be more effective. With Sovereignty, Artemis 3 will deal 207 damage. With Jade Emperor's Crown, it's 221. That also means that the amount of shots required to kill you is actually 
in this case lower which is worse with Jade Emperor's Crown it's 5.69 versus 6.07 not a massive difference obviously less than a full ability but in combination with the basic attack it can theoretically matter when does it matter if the enemy is pretty much only playing off their abilities which I can only really imagine ever being the case for an Ulur basically as otherwise you will always see at least some basic attacks in between and even on Ola you want to throw in those basic attacks and for the basic attacks it should make a huge difference basically just one basic attack can compensate for the damage that you will take more from an ability when we're talking about Jade Emperor's Crown here and that's important because if we're talking about a typical ADC trade while you may take similar damage from basic attacks and abilities you will take way more shots from basic attacks then you will have instances of abilities being used against you and with more shots Emperor's Crown pretty much always wins in this regard, in this comparison. So what does this leave us with? Obviously as we saw Jade Emperor's Crown is vastly superior for your own tankiness but also for the tankiness of your teammates when it comes to any sort of basic attacks and usually that works for high scaling abilities too though it always depends a little bit more and it depends on who is attacking you basically. The perks of Sovereignty are having the better tier 1 and tier 2 and having extra HP 5 plus an extra 15 units of range, it's 70 units of range and that can actually be beneficial because you can basically stay behind your allies as well at a certain distance uh, that will still allow you to give them the aura whereas with Jade Emperor's Crown you basically have to be in the middle of the fray and you cannot protect them while standing far behind them as if the enemy is not affected by the aura it doesn't matter and it's only 55 units. Throughout the games the effect seemed to diminish a little bit because it's just a flat reduction and a percentage reduction of power. But there are certain factors that still make Jade Emperor's Crown the superior choice. For example, an enemy will often not build that much power when you're talking about a solo laner who will just go into a little bit of damage and then mostly defense. Here the reduction will have a lot of effect. Or another example would be if the enemy is building crit because crit scales very well with power and usually the power effect is basically doubled through a crit or even more if you have Deathbringer and if that's taken away that extra power then the power spike is much lower and the crits will be much lower and it's actually more impactful. So there are many many reasons that speak for Jade Ember's crown. The only big plus that I see for Sovereignty honestly is the HP 5 but I would generally recommend going for Jade Emperor's Crown in most situations. I hope this video was insightful and gave you a bit of a deeper look into the numbers and made you understand better which item to choose. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, feel free to click the sub button and maybe the bell, it really helps me out. See you for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out!